I've seen a lot of code bases and one of the main things that they lack is composability and a declarative way of doing things. So take sorting for example, let's say we have this array of numbers and you want to sort them. For that, you can simply say numbers to sort it and that will return to you a copy of the array but sorted. But what if you want to sort them in reverse? So instead of ascending, which would be the default here, you want descending order. So here, the to sorted method allows you to pass in a compare function, which gives you A and B. Now here, you need to return a number where zero represents equality, negative one, or well, anything negative, represents that A should come before B, and one, or anything positive, represents that A should come after B. So with this, we know that we can simply say A and B, and then we subtract A from B. And now we get a reversed sort. Now, this works for simple use cases, but well, in real applications, we're not just sorting numbers. So let's say we have people in our system. Very simple, just a name of type string and created at of type date. Now, let's say we want to sort them. We can't simply say to sort set because, well, they are objects. So what can we do here? Well, we need to tell it explicitly what we're comparing. So let's say we want to sort by name. Well, we can say a.name.localCompare with b.name. And this is where things start getting messy. But if you want to sort by name first, but when two users have the same name, so you get zero, sort them by when they joined, so they created that. So in this case, you need to come here, say const by name, and then local compare b dot name. And then here you can say if different from zero, then we know that we prioritize by name. And finally, we can do a dot created at dot get time, and we subtract that with b dot created at get time. So here we can see the problem with this approach, and that is you're tangling all of this logic up in these callbacks, and it is not reusable. You need to write these comparison functions every single time. And if you want to change the direction of sorting, you have to go in here and modify the comparison some logic itself and then it isn't that clear. So you also hurt legibility. If someone takes a look at this code, they have to take a little bit of time to try and understand what we're sorting by. So let's build something better. So for that, I'm going to create a file called order. And here I'm going to define an order. So we're going to say type order takes in a, and then this will simply be a function where we're going to take in a and b, so the compare function, and we need to return either zero or negative one or one. So it is basically a type alias for this right here, for this compare function, but obviously generic. Now we can create a make, so we can say export const make, and here we're going to take in the compare function, which is going to be an order of t. Now, what is the purpose of this make function? Well, that is to avoid having to compare self and that for equality, because for all primitives, let's say true is equal to true or false is equal to false, is zero equal to zero? Well, this is a rule that all primitives share. So what do I mean by this? Well, we can return a function which takes in self, then that, so the two numbers, a and b, and then here we can simply check this as the first comparison rule. So is self equal to that? Is a equal to b? If so, we know that it is going to be zero. If not, we can invoke the compare function and then we pass in self and that. So the idea of this is to abstract this away. We do not have to repeat ourselves. And once this is false, well, then we can use the actual compare function with the more complex or more specific comparison strategy. So with this, we can see export const string, and this will be an order for a string. And what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to say make, we take in a and b, and then we simply say a local compare with b. Is this greater than zero? If so, one else negative one. As simple as that. So notice how we do not have to handle the zero case because this one is already handling that as the preliminary condition for us. And we can do the same with numbers. So number 
an order of number, then we can say A and B, and then we can say A less than B, if so, negative one, else one. And then let's say we want Boolean. So we can say Boolean, order of Boolean, make, we take in two Booleans, and then if A is equal to false, we know that negative one, otherwise one. And again, we do not need to handle the equality case because make is doing that for us internally. And then we can say data. So you can start extending this with whatever data types or data structures you have. Obviously, the idea is to make it as generic as possible. So here we can say A and then B, and then we get the time for A. So get time and then do the same for B. And then we can say if time A is equal to time B, then return zero. So notice how we're handling two zeros. We're handling this one. So if they are of the same reference, and then if the times are equal. And with this, we can say time A less than time B. If so, negative one, else one. Great. Now with this, what we can do is actually create an order directory. And I'll create an index. So export everything from order and then we can say as order. So now we can come here to the index and let's say we have an array of strings. So const string array, and then we can say string array dot to sort it. And then we can say order, which comes from dot slash order. And we can say dot string. And we know that this is simply going to take A and B and do this internally. Now, this is all nice and dandy. At least things are more readable. However, it is not very useful, is it? I mean, at the very least, you can start using it here as well. An order returns zero, negative one or one. So you can say order dot string A and B. But of course, we need to say A dot name and B dot name. And then we can say order dot date A dot created at and B dot created at. However, this is still imperative code. So we need two more utilities. The first one is a map input function. So we can say we have this data type, so person, and we would like to say map an order to be a person with one of the primitives. So for example, if we want to sort by name, we should be able to do something along the lines of order.string. So this is the order we want to use. And then we can say comma and then get the person here and then say person.name. And we can do the same with the date, of course. So we can say date and then person and then person.createdAd. So let's go ahead and implement this map input. So I'm going to say export const map input, and this is going to take in two generics. And this makes sense because one is the generic or the base order. So the actual function that is going to be the ordering. So what is it going to receive? In this case, we can say this will receive a string. And then what is it going to process? In this case, people. So we can say person. So for that, we can have the generic for the order, and then we can have the generic for the other one, so the actual entity, and then we can take in the order of A, and then we need the getter, which is simply going to be a function, which is going to give a self, in this case B, and we need to return the type of the order, which makes sense, as again, if we say order.string, we want a string, hence this function should return a string. And what is this whole function going to return? Well, the new order, which is going to take in B. And then here we can return a function that gives us self and that. And then we can say retrieved self is equal to getter for self. And then retrieved that is getter for that. And that way we get the A. So we take in each element, self and that, we retrieve the value by applying this callback. And finally, we can return the order for retrieved self and retrieved that. Now we can make a micro optimization here. And that is if you think about this, we need to take in the entity 
and then we need to call in getter and then for self and that, which are two extra calls to this function and imagine the getter was somewhat expensive. And finally, we pass them to order. So for that, we can wrap this whole thing up in a make, which is not this one, but rather this one. So make self and that. That way, this first checks for equality. So whether it's by reference or by value, it is going to be the preliminary condition. So this is just a micro optimization. And since it's just wrapping this up in a make, I see no problem with implementing it this way. So now with this, we can come here and say const by name is equal to order dot map input. And this is our order strategy. Now we can use these predefined ones or well, you can define your custom one. And then here we can take in the entity. So person, and then we're going to say person dot name. Now, if we were to pass in the created ad, for example, we're going to get a type error. So here we can do the same by created ad and then map input order dot date and then person and then person dot created ad. And now with this, we can start using it. As you can see, it's just an order. So in this case, instead of manually having to extract a dot name and b dot name, we can say by name and then a and b. And here we can say name for simplicity's sake. And then we can do the same here by created ad and then a and b. Great. Now it is even more declarative, but we're still missing one crucial piece, and that is a combine. We want to be able to combine orders. We do not need to do this at all. And we, in return, just get a global order that it is going to internally apply the orders sequentially and find the first order that doesn't give us zero. So for that, we can come here over to order and then say export const combine and then we take in t which applies for all orders so obviously the list of orders that you pass must be reading the same type so here we can say orders and this will be a tuple where we have to pass in one order it is required and then we take in an arbitrary numbers of orders. And then here we can do the same, wrap this up in a make, we take in A and B, which are of type T, or well, we can simplify this and simply pass it here instead of at each argument. And then we can iterate over the orders. So for const order of orders, and then out is equal to order, and we pass in A and B. And if out is different from zero, then return out. So negative one or one first one that is not equal. Now, if we have finished the whole loop and all of them are equal, then we know that we can say zero. So now with this, we can come here and combine this. So we can say order dot combine and then say by name and by created add. And look at that. It is incredibly declarative, readable, and composable above all. And finally, let's wrap it up with a reverse. So let's say we want to reverse the order. That means that order by name descending and likewise for created ad. Well, for that, we can simply say const reverse is equal to t and then order. And then all we need to do is say make a and b and then order B and A. So simply pass them the other way around. And well, this will return an order of T. And that's it. Now you can come here and say order dot reverse or well, you can do it here order dot reverse just the name for example now you might be wondering where does this module come from what's the inspiration well this comes from effect that i would dare to call it the missing standard library or typescript so if i change this import over to effect notice how everything works except data it is capitalized, which makes sense to keep this convention, of course. And well, it offers way more than what we created here. It has all array between begins, booleans, clamp, etc. So make sure to check it out. Anyway, this wraps up the video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.